So hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. So I am, um, and I hope you will relax because it's an early morning. Maybe you might have had a great time last night. Maybe day one for spring one, uh, spring IR. Uh, that's why maybe you, some of you guys have a, a kind of drink and uh, hang out, hang out over maybe. So you can, <laughs> you can relax uh, while listening to my session. It's a kind of session is uh, kind of easy. Maybe it's kind of one hour session, something like that. So you can enjoy and uh, just uh, can kind of having uh, so how can I say in English couch potato something like that. So uh, I'm go also going to, to relax and uh, talk to you. So because I'm very very excited to be here because uh, I've joined the Spring IO so far as an audience, but uh, someday I want to be a speaker. But uh, finally the day has come today. So uh, I'm going to take a deep breath, relax, and speak now. So now, now I'm sure that uh, most of you don't know me, right? So you'd like to ask uh, who you are, right? Uh, so let me first give a brief uh, self-introduction. My name is Shinya Yanagihara, and I work for VMware as a uh, developer advocate, mainly working around uh, Asia, especially in Japan. Then when you think of advocate at Bohemia, maybe I'm so sure you know Josh, Josh Long, Josh Long, right? Uh, but uh, I belong to a different team from him. So as I said, uh, uh, working in Japan, so maybe uh, there are lots of language barriers in the world, especially Japanese language, kind of uh, different from other uh, languages. That's why I'm working in, uh, mainly in Japan. Uh, then my technical area that I often speak of uh, application development things like uh, uh, Spring, Kotlin, and Java as well as uh, platform-related things, uh, Kubernetes, platform as a service, and uh, platform engineering right now. So this is because I have had several uh, careers, as this screen shows, uh, mostly in Java development, uh, middleware, and platform-related work. Uh, so I'm here today to talk about Spring and Kotlin. And here is my social account. Uh, I mainly tweet about the application development and the platform related things. Also, uh, if you already have seen my Twitter account, uh, you may know that I post pictures, uh, my food I cook every day and eat every day. So you can enjoy if you're interested in my, uh, my things and my e e topics. So, and I'm not under blue sky yet. So if you are already under blue sky, it's not blue sky today, so um, let me in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's uh, I'm, I'm kidding. So, okay, uh, first, let me ask you a quick question. Do you love spring? Yeah, I know that. So <laughs> I didn't need to ask. It's obvious uh, that you participate in spring IO. Yeah, I know. So how about this question? Do you like Kotlin? Yeah, wow, that's interesting because uh, I don't know why you are here. <laughs> so, but uh, this question, Herbert, have you developed Spring application with Kotlin? Lots of people. Oh, I don't know why you are here. <laughs> so, as for me, I love Kotlin and Spring. Actually, I have been enjoying Kotlin uh, with Spring since Spring Framework 5 announced Kotlin support six years ago, maybe. Uh, so why do I like this combination, uh, Kotlin and Spring? This reason is very, very simple. It's because it's all about developer experience, I think. Speaking of developer experience, I think you might have heard a lot about it, all right? Uh, so do you know what the developer experience means? Simply explained, it is similar to user experience, I think, but subject is the developer, not the users. The developer experience is everything uh, who developing an application, such as designing, 
coding and testing, something like that. And improving the developer experience has been a concern for some time, uh, but it has received particular uh, attention recently, I think. So I believe uh, this developer experience consists of three perspectives. The first is productivity. The second is comfortability. And the third one is fun. In other words, improving the developer experience means improving developer satisfaction. So I have chosen and enjoyed a combination of Spring and Kotlin to improve developer experience. As you know, Spring provides a many, many great developer experience. And I can say, Kotlin provides many developer experience as well. I enjoy using both, uh, feeling that developer experience is not doubled, but three times or maybe four times. For those of you who are familiar with Spring, it goes without saying how Spring has improved developer experience, developer satisfaction. Let me say uh, here just a few. First, uh, development without EJBs, right? Uh, as you know, uh, there used to be complex, really difficult uh, EJBs. Of course, the EJBs, I'm saying here is previous uh, EJB3. The starting point of Spring was uh, we wanted to develop application in a simple way without EJBs, right? The next is uh, to configure autonomous application with Spring Boot. Previously, applications were deployed and run on application server. Some of you uh, maybe love application server, though. It's uh, kind of difficult, right? Uh, however, uh, with the advent of Spring Boot, it is possible to run independently. It's very useful. And even complex distributed applications, architecture such as uh, microservices, can now develop with, uh, simply with Spring Cloud. Not only those, but there are many other great developer experience uh, with Spring that you have already experienced, I think. Improbably got without saying, but now let's briefly look at the value of using Spring. I think the application build mechanism provides a maven and gradual is very, very excellent. However, Spring has made it uh, build mechanism more convenient with the starter mechanism. This mechanism reduces the developer cognitive load by properly uh, configuring necessary in, uh, dependent libraries, right? And next, for developers, uh, the configuration of middleware and uh, external libraries to the application sometimes creates their cognitive load, right? However, uh, Auto configuration mechanism abstract and simplifies the configuration. Monitoring the status applications uh, always has been very, very important. However, in the past, uh, this could be a tedious task uh, because each monitoring object has a different configuration. Spring Boot Actuator. Uh, makes it easy to configure production level monitoring uh, out of the box. In the past, uh, deploying and running application on application servers was costly operation. However, with Spring Boot, it's possible to build uh, binaries that run uh, autonomously with uh, embed <coughs> embedded server. And I believe uh, that uh, more and more applications are being run in containers and serverless uh, these days. So uh, don't worry, Spring Boot makes it easy to build uh, containers and the fast running native images. Which I have mentioned here are uh, just a handful of Spring values. And of course, they are all values that can be used with Kotlin. 
I think you will find that using Spring is enough to improve the developer experience, right? So now I have to say about Kotlin. Next, let's see a little bit about the developer experience in Kotlin. First, Kotlin's syntax is said to be simpler, easier, and conciser. Secondary, uh, because of its simplicity, Kotlin is said to reduce the number of lines of code when you write your code. And as you probably know, Kotlin is a JVM language. And it is compatible with Java. It is also known as a beta Java. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, Kotlin already implements a, a specification that do not exist in Java or uh, have not yet been incorporated into Java language specification. In other words, just by using Kotlin, you get your developer experience that is not available in Java. Well, uh, do you understand the value of Kotlin for my short explanation so far? Maybe no, right? <laughs> Probably you don't. So don't worry. Uh, that's just because uh, it's a kind of heads up so far. As I mentioned at the beginning, I will be sharing the Kotlin developer experience through Spring for those who are already familiar with Spring. But some of you, and maybe most of you know Kotlin's value. So that's why you already know that something. But uh, uh, let me say something about Kotlin's value. OK. Now here is the screen. I'm sure you are familiar with the screen. It's a Spring Initializer. I'm sure that many of you have seen this uh, Kotlin radio button, but uh, you might have never selected it. First of all, let's take a look at the difference between uh, build Gradle when uh, Gradle Groovy is selected and build Gradle Kotlin script when Gradle Kotlin is selected. There is a difference in syntax between Groovy and Kotlin, but they are almost the same. The difference is between Java and Kotlin is the Kotlin JVM plugin and the Spring compiler plugin. This plugin makes it possible to interpret and run Spring written in Kotlin. Before introducing Spring compiler plugin, Let's look at the basic differences between Kotlin and Java. In Kotlin, unlike Java, classes are and uh, their numbers are declared final by default. It is safe and robust and cannot be easily changed due to final declaration. But uh, it may not work well uh, when using external libraries or external frameworks. This is one of the gaps in Kotlin. Uh, you want to, uh, when you want to inherit a class, you must put open keyword. So that uh, Spring compiler plugin complements the specification gaps that occur when developing Spring in Kotlin. Uh, for example, uh, think of uh, Spring AOP. It requires the class to be open, all right? The plugin automatically open classes with component annotation, async annotation, transactional annotation, and the capable and uh, cacheable annotation, and Spring Boot test annotations. Since we have just looked at the class, we will also take a brief look at the class and construct a specification in Kotlin. The class structure itself is almost the same. On the other hand, the definition of the constructor is unique in Kotlin. The primary constructor can be defined at the same time as the class definition. And the constructor keyword can be omitted. 
constructors define the statement as in Java are treated as secondary constructor in Kotlin. So this is uh, uh, important. You must remember. So let's take a look at the code generated by Spring Initializer right now. Uh, it shows the classes for entry point class generated by Java and Kotlin. You can see that they are almost identical. And what is interesting, interesting from a Java developer's uh, point of view is location of the main method. In Kotlin, you can see the uh, demo application class has no statement. And the uh, main function is defined the uh, same level as the uh, class definition, right? This is a uh, uh, different thing. Now that uh, you have seen different main functions from Java, let me tell you a little bit about the Kotlin functions. So by the way, uh, I've already said many times, uh, function. It is a method in Java. And this function can be declared at the top level. In other words, it can be uh, declared just like a class. Functions declared at the top level can be called directly from any classes uh, without a need to create an object to call them. A first class function is a function that satisfies uh, following. You can store functions in collections of variables. You can use functions as a argument to other functions, and uh, you can use functions as return value of other functions. In Kotlin, now I have just mentioned the functions the first class functions. So how about Java? Java doesn't technically have first class functions. Actually, uh, Java can simulate uh, first class functions to a certain extent uh, with anonymous class and uh, generic functions interface. So, but Java treats uh, lambda expression as an object, which is a true uh, first class student in Java. So, I talked about the most basic aspect of Kotlin specification. From here, let's take a look at the Kotlin features, specifications, and productivity through the development of simple application using Spring. Uh, what I will be dealing with uh, a very, very simple Spring application, it will occur very, uh, it will cover the uh, very, very basics of uh, positive persisting data on receiving an HTTP request. Let's first look at the data model or entity. Entities only need to have data fields and attributes. So it would be nice if we could use something like record in Java, right? First of all, I'd like to mention that even before record in Java was implemented, Kotlin already had a syntax called data class uh, that provides record-like record functions. By the way, as you probably know, you cannot use a record as an entity in JPA in Java. Unfortunately, I'm Kotlin the same. Kotlin does not allow the use of data class in JPA as well. The reason why record cannot be used for JPA entities is that it would not a class that satisfies entity specification. It requires a constructor with no argument and a setter. The reason why Kotlin's data class cannot be used as an entity in Spring Data JPA is described Spring's documentation. This is because, like Java, JPA is not designed with data class in mind. Now, I have already said data class many times, 
without explaining data classes. It is a little late, but uh, let's take a look at the data class here. I will assume uh, those who know Java are familiar with record. <coughs> first of all, first of all uh, data class and record, uh, they are almost the same. They removed the need of boiler template, like a uh, uh, equals method, hash code method, and two spring method. On the other hand, <coughs> uh, there are some differences. In record, all fields are private and final. In data class, you can choose between mutable and immutable. In Kotlin, when declaring a field and keyword var, var makes it uh, immutable, and var makes it mutable. The other difference is that data class can extend other class in Kotlin. However, record classes in Java cannot extend other classes. Now, you may be wondering where data class can be utilized because it's not available in a <clears throat> entity. A typical use case is data transfer object, or DTO. Data class is a simple mechanism to store only data. So it can be used in many other ways. In Java, since uh, Java 10, uh, maybe, it is possible to omit the data type description when de uh, declaring variable by using var. However, Java's var keyword and Kotlin's var keyword are slightly different. In Kotlin, as I said, uh, variables, are, variables are declared with var and or a val keyword. The data type can be omitted since the type, re type inference is performed with either keyword. Defining a variable with a var makes it mutable and val makes it mutable. In Kotlin, if there is no particular reason, variable declaration by val it's preferred. <coughs> As I just mentioned, Kotlin makes it possible to uh, write safe code by making variable declaration immutable by using val. In addition, null safety is taken into account in Kotlin. When it comes to syntax safety, the first thing is to consider is type safety. This is implemented uh, in Java as well. And Kotlin uh, basically does not allow null, ref null references. If there is a possibility of null, it can be made knowable by adding a question mark. So, Kotlin has a null safe uh, mechanism. So it is best to make sure that the code does not uh, cause null pointer exception. A common case that uh, can occur is uh, Kotlin is Java compatible allowing the use of third party libraries. And then <coughs> the null pointer exception can uh, be caused by that. Or if you use non-null assertion operator uh, represented by double exclamation mark, uh, this is also called uh, the null pointer exception rubbers operator. <laughs> I'm not sure though. That's kind of a joke. In any case, uh, if you are going to write code in Kotlin, why not make it <clears throat> as null safe as possible? So, deriving from entity, we have looked at the Kotlin specification with various assets. Uh, now let's look at the next repository. When you define a uh, repository interface, you define it uh, inherit from JPA repository and uh, CRUD repository or uh, list 
this the CRUD repository, uh, which is uh, actually introduced in Spring 3. Now, uh, what we want to uh, focus on here is the way interface is exper expressed in Kotlin. In Kotlin, the column, column mark is a keyword used to inherit the superclass. And while specifying the superclass, uh, it is also possible to specify the primary constructor or superclass if necessary. But that is not all. In Kotlin, this column keyword of the same also express the interface implementation. Now, uh, then look, let's look at the service layer right now. If you are familiar with Spring, you will already able to understand this Kotlin code. First is annotation for service layer. Next, we use Kotlin's primary constructor to inject the repository object. As you can see, uh, the constructor keyword is omitted here. And the functions are defined as expressions, not statements. Uh, uh, in this code, I use the Spring Data JPA as a persistent component. In this case, I'm using a query by example here. Now, here comes the statement that it's not so familiar in Java. There is a curly bracket uh, after apply when the property is set. That is called scope function. So what is the scope functions? The purpose is to execute a block of code within the context of an object. When you call the kind of a function an object with lambda expression provide it from its uh, temporary scope. In that scope, you can access the object without its name. Scope function includes the following, apply, also, let, run, with. We have five things. There are many similarities between these five scope functions based on the similar operations. However, uh, there is a difference, actually, between runtime and lambda result or context object. There is also a difference between uh, referencing a context object with uh, this keyword and uh, uh, the it keyword. So this chart is kind of important for the uh, scope functions. Now, let's look at a little more of the, of the code. So when developing in Java, you might sometimes Thing, sometimes want to uh, write to do comment, right? So uh, to leave comment uh, on future implementation, maybe. Of course, you can write to do comment in Kotlin as well. However, uh, Kotlin also provides to do as a function. This function is uh, simple throws, not implemented to error. In indicating that it is not implemented. This could be used to uh, indicate that uh, uh, compile will pass, but not yet implemented. Now, what do I want you to see this to do function is return type. You can see that it is something called nothing. So nothing, what do you think of it? It would literally return nothing, right? Uh, if you think so, you are half right. In Java, uh, you specify void, void keyword when returning an empty return value. Kotlin has such return types, uh, do not return a, a 
concrete result. Uh, one is a uh, unit, and the other is nothing. Unit represents the same thing as Java's void, indicating that return value is uh, empty. Nothing has no instance. So, in other words, uh, nothing does not return a value and can indicate that it does not exist. An example of uh, this use case is a return value of a function that will never terminate normally. Uh, this nothing is uh, uh, this nothing is a uh, subclass that inherit from all classes. It's a so I can say ultimate embodiment classes. So on the other hand, any well, something like the uh, object class in Java, uh, uh, any is a super class or of classes. In other words, it's ultimate abstract class. I can say. The application will be completed soon. So finally, uh, let's look at the controller layer and the entry point. So now that uh, you have seen Spring code written in Kotlin, you are probably familiar with this controller and entity point code. However, uh, there is surely one part of this code I just put that is unfamiliar to you. This one. This is the way I often use uh, write loggers, but I don't think you have ever seen this kind of syntax in Java. Such a syntax is called an extension property. Now let's talk about uh, extension. It's a useful feature of Kotlin in Java. If you want to extend a uh, functionality of a class, you must you need to uh, define new class by inheritance. Of course, Kotlin can also uh, inherit in the class same way. However, using uh, this uh, Kotlin extension, it is possible to add new functionality to a class without the need to inherit. It's interesting. There are two ways of extensions. One is a function, and uh, the other is that the property, as I said. So added functionality can be called statically. This extended functionality is not provided by modifying the original class structure. So it means, uh, the class doesn't change at all if you choose, if you add uh, Kotlin extensions. Therefore, private members in original class cannot be accessed uh, by this extended functionality. So uh, this completes a super simple Spring Boot application using Kotlin right now. So now here is um, just one bonus. An application is not enough just about running, is it? Uh, you need proper exception handling always, right? In this code example, runtime exception is strong. However, Kotlin does not cause compiler error without throwing an exception. Kotlin makes no distinction between checked exception and unchecked exception. Since there is no distinction between checked exception and unchecked exception in Kotlin, the compiler does not generate an error. However, you must take actions when exception may occur. In Kotlin, the try-catch syntax can be used as in Java. So in addition, exception handling is uh, possible using function called run-catching. The run-catching function executes the given block and returns the result type object. 
if an exception is thrown with, uh, within the block, the run catching function does not throw an exception. You can obtain the result block to execution and the return value of exception from the result object returned by run catching function. So you can choose uh, both of way. So you can choose uh, try catch or run catching. Uh, either way, it's okay. But I think the run catching function is a more uh, customable, so you can choose use it. So now this time the last bonus. I have just one more thing. So I'm just talking about the Kotlin today, right? So did you see Kotlin conference, Kotlin conf uh, held in April? Maybe it was really interesting. I watched that. Uh, there was an announcement related to Spring development. I know that some of you use Gradle to build Spring, right? So, and you can write uh, in either, either Groovy or uh, Kotlin DSL. There are announcement that Kotlin DSL will be default for Gradle build. The Gradle uh, Kotlin DSL was uh, already featured and adopted in the technology radar provided SOTWORKS. So I think uh, this is my prediction, though uh, you must focus on Gradle. If you use uh, Gradle, uh, you should focus on Gradle Kotlin DSL. If you are using Gradle, you may come across uh, Kotlin in your, in your near future. Now I will show you how to migrate from Gradle definition by Groovy to uh, definition by Kotlin DSL in five simple steps. It's really uh, simple. Uh, first, replace single quotation with double quotation. Uh, you can replace them in your editor at once. It's okay. Next, at the round bracket, the ID, the plugin block, and the, some element in the dependency block. In step three, explicitly attach the assignment operator to the property to be assigned a value. Actually, even in Groovy, uh, some of you use assignment operator already, but in Groovy, uh, the assignment operator could be omitted. Uh, that's why uh, maybe you didn't watch the assignment operator in your Gradle code uh, script. On the other hand, in Kotlin, the assignment operator is always necessary. Then rename the field from build grader to build grader KTS. Uh, it shows the Kotlin script. Now run grader and run step one through the step three. Then uh, watching for errors. Maybe something happens. After going through the step one through three, the uh, last step is uh, fix the other uh, where error occurs. Errors are more likely to occur uh, in custom tasks. For example, an error may be caught by uh, speci specifying types. Uh, this shows that uh, it's uh, difficult to see. The test, something like that. Uh, that's just one of the example. Well, this is a messy explanation, uh, but uh, please check and uh, correct each one individually. Maybe uh, something happens, but uh, it's not so difficult to uh, modify. You can try. Uh, not exactly step six, though, uh, but I think fix process associated with migration is the accumulation of your experience. So please accumulate your experience through various greater projects. So actually, that's all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you felt you can learn Kotlin from Spring and then understand the fun of Kotlin, uh, which you can do because you know Spring. I wrote uh, several takeaways, uh, but the main point is just one. 
Spring development, de, spring development with Kotlin is a lot of fun. And if you have never used Kotlin before, you should definitely give it a try. So my favorite content, uh, before I showing the, this content, I just want to uh, tell you one thing. I really love Kotlin, but uh, uh, Kotlin references is kind of uh, many, actually in Japan especially, maybe you have a lot of things. So for me, the various spring articles and the books are all educational materials always. So because I often read the uh, uh, content uh, while reading and uh, thinking about what would happen if uh, code written in Java were implemented in Kotlin. So I just always thinking. So kind of my head is a uh, compiler from Java to Kotlin, something like that. So my favorite content right now is here at Spring Academy. It's a, anyway, it's just great. You can see. So because it has a lot of information and uh, detailed explanation, it had a paid plan actually. But of course, it's uh, also free content. So there is also a coupon for a discount. Maybe you have both, uh, all of you had already uh, get a coupon. So if uh, you lost or you don't know about the coupon uh, and are interested in that, please contact me or any other VMA members. I hope you enjoy this content. It's really great uh, to learn Spring and, and uh, uh, <laughs> it's not Kotlin though. Uh, you can learn a lot of things about this content. So this is a URL. So you can see today. So thanks uh, for listening to the end. I will continue to pursue the fun of Kotlin and Spring. So please contact me if you are interested in me and Spring and Kotlin. All right, I, I will be uh, welcome to your uh, uh, say hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>